I continue my journey from Sidewinder to Fleet Carrier, and I finally have enough money to get out of my dolphin and into something bigger. But before we do that, we have one other little task that I need to do. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lead Dangerous with Uncle with Astronomy. So today we're going to continue and as you can see here, I've been mining a little bit in the Dolphin. A lot of it was mined doing a live stream, so I have way more money now than I need for the next upgrade. Yes, it's not ideal if we want to do this as a speedrun, but again, this is not a speedrun, this is just a, a little fun project for myself. So almost 250 million, way more than we need for the Python that I'm going to upgrade to next. However, Let's just go and have a look at the build so you can see what kind of problems we're facing here. So here we have it. It's a pretty standard Python mining build. Not a whole lot of, of things to it. There are three 2D mining lasers here giving us pretty fast mining. We have a discovery scanner. We have a refinery. I've got B rated here. We can, to be honest, probably upgrade that to an A. I mean, we should have enough money for it. I mean, paying one extra million doesn't really matter much. It's around 100 million right now. 3A Prospector, 3A Shield Generator, 3A Fuel Scoop, and then some 5A Collectors for six total collectors, and then three 6E Cargo Racks for a total of 192 tons of cargo. 5A Power Plant, it's plenty of power to power this thing. 6A Thrusters, let's get some speed, some mobility out of this thing. 5A Frame Shift Drive, D-rated Life Support and Sensors, and an A-rated Distributor as well. So you can see this is a pretty A-rated ship here. This gives me a total time to depletion with four pips of the lasers of 21 seconds. That should be enough for me to completely mine a rock before I run out of power. However, but there is one little problem, and that is those 15 light years of laden jump range. That means with a full cargo hold, we're only going to be able to jump 15 light years at a, at a time. That's going to slow us down. And even when we are empty with a with only a fuel tank, we're not even passing 20 light years. That means moving this thing around from system to system is going to take a while. And that's why I think since we're going to be staying in this, this is pretty much going to be the ship that's going to push us all the way to the uh, to the 5 billion. I want to spend a little bit of time to make this a more comfortable build to fly so we don't have to spend that much time. In this case, of course, we're going to go increase race and mass manager. You can see this helps a lot. It almost gives us 10 light years. Total latent is pretty good at, uh, at 160, meaning we can probably reach most stations with very little fuel school. Back in game, let's just quickly go and remind ourselves what is the unlock criteria for Farseer. Here we have her, Felicia Farseer. We can see we need a exploration rank of scout. I think my rank, no, my rank now should be none. No, it's actually mostly aimless. So I have apparently done a little bit of exploration somehow. I don't know why, why, where that came from. We are definitely not scouts yet. However, when I've been flying around in the systems in the ship, I have just been honking systems. I've been scanning any planets. I've just been honking systems. So there should be some data that we can sell in here. Yeah, see, we actually have half a million worth of credits, and this is just from flying around. Okay, we got oh, we got three messages. Ha <laughs> ha! I can see it there. Promotion to scout, and we got the invitation from Farsia. So that was actually I was expecting what I had to go and do a little bit of road to riches to get that that rank, but apparently it was enough just honking systems as I was traveling to get that little bit extra um, extra data. And now we go into Farsia. We can see the next step, of course, is to get ourselves some meta alloys. For that, we gotta head into the hydro sector. It shouldn't be too far from here. And here we're just gonna quickly sit down at the Barnacle Forest, get out in our newly acquired SRV, just to pick up a single unit of meta alloy. Oh, there's one. Now, before we head back to Farsia, I just want to check. I think maybe we are pretty close to Jameson's crash site. Yeah, look at that, 81 light years. So instead of flying all the way back to Decat right there, where Farsia is, only to fly all the way out here again, I think we're just going to go and pay Jameson's crash site a little visit and stock up on data. Hmm, this is odd. I just scanned the planet, but it's for some reason it's not showing up for me here. Okay, fair enough. I'll do this the old-fashioned way again, I guess, and we'll fly there by surface coordinates. Should be just over this hill. Oh, 
Is that it right there? I think it is. So let's just quickly gonna fill up on data here and then we can move on to the next location. My adaptive encryption captures is now full. So that's gonna be it for this place. Let's get back to the ship. Let's just quickly check Daft's Hope. Is that close? It is. Once again, it's out in this area as well. So I think we're just gonna go and pay Daft's Hope a visit as well. And there we are, Daft's Hope. This is probably very familiar to most of you guys. So I'm just gonna get out of this thing. Let's zoom in a little bit on the radar here. And then I'm just gonna run loops around it. Now, in terms of how much material I'm going to need, I mean, when you're doing these upgrades for the first time with an engineer, it's always slower than it is when you have actually leveled it up. Because you're not fully leveled up when you start, you should expect to do a few more rolls than you would normally do. So just to be on the safe side, normally I go for 10 for a great uh, 5 upgrade. Um, but in this case, I'm probably going to go, let's say, 15. Just to be sh uh, just be on the safe side, and I'm not gonna run out of materials before I manage to get the full upgrade. Oh, there's one, and that's two, and three, and four, and five. That should do it. I'm just gonna gonna finish the run here, just because. Back to the ship, and then I think it is time for us to head out to. To Farseer to hand in that metalloid that we've now been flying around within the cargo hold for the last hour or something. Now while we're heading out to Farseer, just quickly want to go back here to Coriolis. You can see here I've actually set these up a little bit. Just want to calculate exactly what materials I need. Um, I know I'm going to go for 15 grade 5 rolls. Again, because it is the first time we're an engineer, we are going to have to do more rolls. So I've gone 5, 5, 8, 8, and then 15 at the end. So this is essentially the list of materials that we need. Um, and we can see we should have the data mine wake exception. We can cross trade. We cross trade 15 for the grade 5, or 16 actually for the grade 5, so that's enough there. And then we have some lower grade materials as well. We have some raw stuff here. Erratic hyperspace trajectories could cross trade for those. We're going to cross trade for these. Chemical distillery, we're picking up a ton of those. Phosphorus, raw materials. Chemical processors have plenty of those. And the same with atypical wake disruption. Atypical. Disrupt the wake echoes, cross trading those as well. We're gonna to head to Ray Gateway anyway at some point. They have a data trader there, so we're gonna trade there. So, all we need now is the phosphorus, manganese, and arsenic. And I'm just quickly gonna head over to the commander's toolbox and go to the material finder. I just wanna check what categories these are in. Um, because if these are just one category, I could cross trade. That would be really useful. So, arsenic is category six. And it is a grade 2 material, but it's one of those grade 2s that are not that easy to find for some reason. Um, <laughs> manganese is category 3, and phosphorus is 2. I think it's going to be fast just to try and find a planet that has these three materials on it. Hopefully something we can find that's close to uh, Farseer, so we can just go and pick everything up from, uh, from there. Okay, it actually came up with a few options. One of them being in-system. Dicky at 4 apparently fulfills all those criteria and the percentages, they're not bad. So Dicky at 4 I think is going to be our destination. Touchdown at Farseer Inc. Let's just go ahead and let's just refuel, repair, go into engineer workshop. We're going to donate one meta alloy and there we go. Farseer is now unlocked. So now I just need a few raw materials, so I'll probably just quickly go and collect those off camera. And then next time we can go and build ourselves a new Python. And hopefully take it for a spin as well and see how it performs compared to this one. So if you want to continue following this little series, go down and hit the subscribe button. But that's going to be it for this time. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a like. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space.